All right. Well, that is our roundup of our call online tools. And this brings us to our main seg segment, which is growth with grants. Now, the particular challenge, I mentioned we had a particular challenge uh, with this. And the challenge was, was um, uh, Kim, who is presenting, uh, this was scheduled to present, uh, has found herself in a uh, awkward situation where she can't be here tonight. So something's cropped up and she can't actually be here uh, tonight. So we did look for another speaker for uh, in the same area. And would you believe everyone that were contacted was, was booked out as well. But Kim has gone the extra mile and she has recorded a special session for us, which I'm going to play for us now. Uh, and she, she did that this afternoon so that uh, she's able to provide the uh, up-to-date information about what's happening with our grants right now. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Kim, she is her business is Growology. She is a professional grant writer. She's a very successful uh, grant writer and she works with small businesses. She works with uh, business consultants. She works with digital marketers uh, or people in the digital realm uh, to help their customers and their clients to be successful in uh, getting the grants. Now, something like $56 million worth of grants that are available for small business. Most of us don't even know what uh, grants we're eligible for, let alone know what's available. And it does depend on, uh, you know, what's happening with the government priorities and, you know, you know what they're wanting to fund as well. Generally, it uh, helps to drive you know, government policy of the day, whether it's state government or uh, local government. Uh, they'll give money for business to help them to advance their uh, policies and causes. So we have Kim here and I've got a recording. Of this. Hopefully this will... Um, uh, this will share well. Uh, if you've got any trouble with the sound uh, or the video, just just let me know. Just drop it into chat to me. Uh, but we've tried to optimize it so that it actually does play well. All right, everyone, put to get your hands together. Here's Kim. Hey, everybody. Great to be here with you. And I'm so sorry that I can't be with you in person. I'm actually away at a conference this week, speaking, speaking and teaching. And I've been traveling all over the place and I got my time zones completely messed up. And so that's why I'm not there in person. But I'm going to share my screen right now and dig in because I've got lots to share with you about how to use grants as a growth strategy. So thank you so much for inviting me to be here, Nick. And I'm I'm really delighted to be able to come and share with your community the thing that I know and love the most. So let's go. Okay, so first of all, we're here to talk about grants. Just a little about me for those of you who don't know me. So here at Growology, we make grants super easy for people. We're all about providing strategic advice and helping people plan for the future. And in fact, our, our kind of word for this year is growth. So we're all about helping you to grow your business. And we do that by helping you to access grants. So I want to start by saying you're in the right place if you're generally interested in whether grants are available for you. If you maybe have no idea where to look, how to find the right grants for you or whether you're eligible for anything. Or maybe you've had a grant or two in the past, but it hasn't really worked out for you, or you want to know how you can leverage this growth strategy more effectively. Usually when people are talking to me, they're in one of those three places. And if that's you, then you are in the right place and I'm going to get your questions answered for you. Now, I want to tell you, let me see if I can just move this down the bottom. There we go. Today, these are, uh, this is what I'm going to cover off for you. So um, I'm going to give you some basics about grants. So some statistics, what types of grants are out there. I'm going to help you understand eligibility because that's the most asked question I get. Am I eligible for grants? I'm also going to tell you where you can go to look for grants. I'm going to tell you how you can win grants and I'm going to share with you some of our success stories and then I'm going to give you a pathway to get ready using grants as a growth strategy in 2024 if that's something that you want for your business. And I want to tell you that the reason why I am so passionate about grants is because I think they are just like the hidden secret that really can help us grow exponentially. I think that we often overlook them because they seem a little bit too hard. And I think they have the potential to really change our businesses. And I know that because we were able to get massive growth in our own business using grants. So if you've never met me before, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and how I come to be here in front of you. This is my little boy, Archie and I in uh, Fiji. I think that was last about last April or something. 
when we went over there for a conference. Archie is nine now and he's homeschooling and he travels with me everywhere I go. He's a fantastic little traveler. He comes with me all over the world. And that's our puppy dog in the middle there, Taco. She does not come with me all over the world, but as you can see, she's very cute and we don't have any trouble finding people to look after her when we go away. And then this is a picture of me ocean swimming because that's my favorite thing to do. I never feel more alive than when I'm connected to the surface of the earth out there in the ocean. And I do swim two or three K a day, you know, three or four times a week. Sometimes off Burley, we live on the Gold Coast in beautiful Miami and we spend half our time in Western Australia in Fremantle. So yeah, I like to swim wherever I am. Now, in terms of how I come to be talking about grants, the reason why I got some exposure to the world of grants, I've been a strategist for a very long time. These are my businesses. And a few years back, I wanted to build a tech product in our, in our consulting business, which helps corporate and government to build a better culture. And I didn't have any money to bootstrap that tech product. So I got myself a small state government grant and I built the prototype and I tested it with a couple of my clients and they loved it. And then I went and got a much larger grant and I then went on to stack seven different grants together and took on the game of growing from 250,000 to 2 million in two years using grants as our key growth strategy. And of course, as you can imagine, we were so successful with that, that people started saying, which grants did you use? How did you do it? Can you teach me how to use that grant? And, and what's interesting to me is that even though these businesses, they seem like quite different things from the outside, they're really quite similar. They're all based on taking a strategic approach. So it's all about just taking a step back and recognizing where am I going here? What's going to help me get there and how can I be strategic about it? So as I mentioned, we scoped our project out using a small scoping grant from the Queensland government. Then we built a prototype using a much larger federal government grant. Then we scaled our team using some wage reimbursements, the apprenticeship scheme and some uh, local uh, wage reimbursement schemes. And then we took the product offshore so that we could use the marketing grants. And so this gives you a bit of a, an idea about how it's often, people will often think, you know, which is the grant that's going to help me succeed, but it's about the strategy of stacking grants together to get real leverage and, and, you know, thinking about it as a strategy. And one of the reasons why I love now helping other business owners use grants as a growth strategy is because for me, these are my values, fun, family, and freedom. This is my team in the Philippines last year. We went over for a um, a business blueprint conference with our offshore team over there. And that's my partner on the right hand side. So he joined us in the business last year, which just means that we're able to, to travel, to homeschool our child, to be together, to support each other in life and business. And it just gives us so much freedom to have fun and to continue growing, continue growing the business, continue growing our family. So this is us in Fremantle, I think about September last year. My little boy, he is such a powerful manifester. He met these people who run our like a boat kind of business and he got chatting to them and then they just said, come on, we'll take you up for a parasail. And uh, so we all went parasailing for the day, which was amazing. But so I really do think that grants are an underutilized business growth strategy, which can help you to stay competitive, to be more innovative, to scale far quicker than you're likely to otherwise, and to optimize opportunities, whether those are, you know, opportunities for business growth or opportunities to launch a new product or opportunities to do good out in the world. So I've just experienced for myself that it is just an incredible ability with grants to just go quicker. And as you can probably already tell, I do everything quick, think quick, talk quick, and, and make my decisions really quick. And I'm, I'm so honored now that I get the chance to help other Australian business owners. Last year, we secured over $26 million worth of funding for Australian business owners. And our goal for this year, 2024, is 100 million business owners. So we're really pumped and, uh, and ready to go with that. So there are heaps of grants available. As you can see at the moment, there's nearly $70 billion worth of grants available in Australia. So it's a massive and rapidly changing environment. And, you know, part of the challenge for us, we have a whole team of people who just research what's going on out there so that we can bring it to you simply. But, you know, part of the challenge is just staying consistent. Consistency is probably the most important thing to a successful strategy to grow with grants.
Now, like any growth strategy, I mean, for us, it's been exponential growth. But like any growth strategy, it doesn't just happen because we sign up or buy the course or, you know, it's going to take time. We have to develop our skills over time and we've got to be flexible about the way that we think about our business, what we deliver and what we're willing to do. Because, of course, we've got to be able to meet the needs of the funder. And we've got to stay consistent. We know that uh, the, the figures around grants tell us that the average success rate is only 17%. Um, so ours is actually 49% now. But yeah, on average, you're going to have to apply for five to six competitive grants to win one. And I think it's just good to know that once you craft your pitch really well once, you can usually reuse it and just, just tweak little things. But that's just something to know up front. At any given point, there are over 3,000 grants available in Australia. So it is a constantly changing landscape. 30 grants open every week and 10 close in Australia. And the other thing that we like to tell people is that grants are always targeting something specific, right? They're always either trying to help a particular revenue portion of business or number of employees or an industry or their foreign activity like to help you automate to help you do your marketing to help you create employment so it's really important to be thinking from the outset what is this grant about and how can my project be how can my pitch be kind of like tweaked so that it really speaks into what the funder's looking for one of the other basics that i i like to remind people up front is that as a general rule, and there are, of course, uh, exceptions to the rule, but grants are generally going to cover you for up to about a million dollars. And after a million dollars, you're really looking for VC money. Um, and it's a different kind of investment strategy. So the most common grants are going to be sort of fifty to $250,000. Uh, and sometimes they're much smaller, like, like $5,000. And as I mentioned, they're always targeting something specific. So they'll target industries. They'll target... A, a, demog a demographic problem or a demographic trend. So state government funding is always going to follow state demographics. So that's why we see different styles of grants in different states, depending on where you are in Australia. Now, just in terms of giving you some information about what types of grants are there, there's really five types of grants. There's one-off or rolling grants. So one-off grants are, you know, those types of grants that are announced that are just a just a one-off we're having a community infrastructure grant it's just opening now it'll be open for three months then it closes recipients will be advised and then it doesn't open again so that's a one-off grant a rolling grant is the kind of grant that stays open all year round so you can continue to apply for it so that's things like the accelerating commercialization grant which has been replaced by a new scheme now that targets the federal government priority areas uh, of which there are five or six, and that one stays open all the time, or sometimes they stay open until the funding is exhausted. And then we also have rolling grants that open multiple times in a year. So you know that you can count on those opening again. Research and innovation grants. So this is all about incentivizing Australian business owners to continue to do things that are new and novel, to come up with new processes, new systems, new technology. So to keep Australia at the forefront of innovation and that keeps us competitive in a global market. So that's why the government likes to um, incentivize that. And interestingly, oftentimes, you know, people don't even realize that what they're doing is R&D and that they're eligible for those types of grants. Commercialization grants. So this is money for marketing. So this is if you have your product at MVP or beyond, it's ready to go to market, but you need some money to get it out there. That's commercialization funding. Expansion funding is about helping you to grow. So this is going to be your money for wages, your money to export. So the things that help you take it to the next level. Sometimes also money for automation in there. And then of course, there's also disaster relief funding. So whenever we have, have a disaster relief, our mechanisms will kick in pretty soon after to help people recover from that in different ways. Now, these are my top 10 tips for you about where to go and look for grant funding. I'll just move this picture of my own face over here out of the way. You're welcome to take a photo of it, but I am going to give you as a gift at the end of this, our grants guide, our definitive guide to government grants, which has 
all of this information that I'm talking about and all of the links to these top 10 places to start looking, but also has a whole bunch, like we do a whole tour around Australia and give you all of our favourite grants at both federal level and state by state. So that will be available to you on our last slide. Now, what's the next thing people most commonly ask me? How detailed should my responses be? And my answer is, well, how long is a piece of string, right? But as a general rule, you can, it really depends, like even though all of these, what we should probably think of as funding opportunities sit at, um, they all sit under, under the umbrella that we call grants, but every grant is a little bit different, to be honest with you. So the schemes will be different, the way that the funds are administered can be different, what's required as evidence to apply will be different. And so the complexity that, of response that they're looking for can differ significantly across different grants. As a general rule, what you can tell yourself is, or what you can say to yourself, is that if it's a grant that's sort of up to about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, probably your criteria responses need to be a couple of paragraphs each. And that can often be a real challenge, like nailing it down into something that's that synthesized. But if it's like a half a million dollar grant, then they're gonna to wanna to expect to see a lot of detail. So they're gonna want plans, designs, commercialization strategies, lots of supporting evidence. And that's not something that I would recommend attempting at the last minute without a lot of planning. Okay, so let's have a peek at what's going on in the country at the moment. I shared with you that there's almost $70 billion available right now in Australia. And this is kind of the, the geographic spread of where that lies. So this gives you a bit of sense of how many and how much there is in each state around Australia. And then in terms of the activity areas that grants will often fund, you can see under the activity types, what types, how many grants there are and what the value is of those grants in each of these activity areas. And we also can have a look by industry. So we can see how does the government kind of allocate its funding, but there is still quite a lot of general non-industry specific grants out there. And again, all of this is in our grants guide, which you're very welcome to download. Okay, so the next most asked question is, how do we win a grant? How do we, how do we make sure that our grant wins? And we, we're really successful at winning grants. As you see, we're almost 50% success rate. So part of the reason for that is that we are strategists first and foremost. So we do our preparation really well. For our clients, we wanna step back and have a look at what are your business goals? And these are also the questions I would encourage you to ask yourself if you're planning to use grants as a growth strategy. So what, um, you know, what do we need to do to be really well positioned? Have we got our financials done? Can we easily put our hands on facts and figures? Do we have testimonials? Do we have a project pitch ready? Do we have a pitch deck ready? Do we have a commercialization strategy? So really getting yourself in a position that if someone came up to you this afternoon and said, I've got $150,000, why should I give it to you? You would have all the data ready to show them that is really gonna position you for success. And then the second thing is to position by really thinking about which are the right grants for my business? What am I trying to achieve? And importantly, what's the alignment between what I want money for and what the government's looking for money for? Because one of the most common pitfalls I see is people thinking that their idea is great. Now, I'm a business owner and an entrepreneur myself. And I know that, you know, we all think that our product is great, that we've got the best idea in the world, but so does every other entrepreneur around us. So it's not enough just to assume that because you've got a great idea or it's going to have impact out in the world or because you're certain that people need it, that we should use taxpayers' money to fund it. So it's really about positioning. Do your research, know what the gap is, know what the market demand is for, for what you're offering and then craft a pitch that is really going to be compelling for the funder and in being compelling that's not only about being able to document or I guess project or estimate what you're going to achieve in terms of you know what sort of employment opportunities will this create what sort of revenue will it generate but also being able to look deeply at those guidelines and I know that they're sometimes complex and hard to read but being able to look at the guidelines and really under, understand the scope and intent of what it is out to achieve with this funding, and then being able to align your responses with that. That is probably the biggest tip I can give you, align your responses well with the scope and intent of the funding. Okay, these are some questions you should ask yourself to get ready. And look, 
these are just good business practice anyway, right? We should be asking ourselves these questions at least once a year, if not once a quarter. I mean, we sit down and go through all of these questions uh, and ask ourselves from the inside, these sorts of things every quarter. We also ask ourselves from the outside, is it easy to find us? Is it easy to work with us? Do our clients feel loved up and delighted? Are they happy with the results we, we produce? So it's really about being able to, you know, take that, that skill of emotional intelligence and turn it in towards our businesses and ask ourselves those critical questions. Okay, my top five tips for you to position for success. You've got to be in it to win it. So participation is key. We know at that success rate of 17% that you're going to have to have five to six cracks at it to win one. So don't be put off if you sort of try once and you're unlucky. And it takes planning. So make sure you're asking yourselves those questions. Make sure you're doing the preparation work, getting your documentation in order before the opportunity comes along. And then also doing the research so that you know what types of grants are going to help you grow and you can be ready because grants will often open and then close within two weeks, which is, you know, most of us as business owners can't just stop tomorrow and take the next two weeks to sit down and craft a pitch for something we may or may not be successful with. So you really want to be doing that background work along the way. Make sure that you position well, and this means make sure that you know what the grant is trying to achieve and that you really are eligible and well aligned for it. And then projectification is all about thinking of your business as a, as a project. So a government's going to want to see a beginning, a middle and an end when it's issuing funding. And that's super important so that you can really show what this funding is going to achieve. So if they don't want to just give you money so that you can run a business that you're already running or so that you can make more money as a business owner. Grants are always about economic stimulation and employment. So they want to know how many more jobs, how much more revenue, what's it going to do for the community around it? How does it help? How does it help us? And if you think about local government grants, grants always exist at the local government level, the state government level, and the federal government level, as well as, of course, private grants. So they're always going to know, want to know at the, the local government level, how does this make us look good to our boss, which is the state government? State government's always going to want to know, how does this make us look good to our boss, which is the federal government? Okay, if you, want, if you want some resources, I've got some here for you. This will take you to our 25 top tips for finding, submitting and winning government grants. Uh, so you can grab that one along the way. That's got some really useful information in it that will help you dig deeper, I guess, into what might be useful in preparing for grants. So you can just scan that one and it'll take you straight into the download for that. But I do also have our government grants guide for you as well. Now, when people don't win grants, what do we see? These are the four things I, I repeatedly see. It's really routine. People are not well positioned. They haven't actually taken time to understand the grant that they want to apply for. They just think some of the words sounds like them. They're not prepared. They don't have a project profile. They don't have a pitch deck. They don't have last year's financials done yet. So they're not going to be eligible. They spend all this time pulling together criteria responses for a submission and they'll, they'll be knocked out in the first round because they don't have the supporting evidence. Um, and the other things is people can be a bit inflexible. So you've got to think of this like it's a, it's a win-win collaboration. It's a business relationship. It's a negotiation. So what are you offering the funder that helps them deliver on what they're all about? And then how can you use the money that they're offering um, so that you can achieve your goals? So it's about being a little bit flexible in delivery. Now, I'm not saying, you know, start doing something that you don't already do um, or do something you want don't want to do of course but what I'm saying is you might have to think about how you shape it a little bit more so can you take the thing that the service or product you offer and deliver it for a specific target group that the government wants to help like a culturally and linguistically diverse group or um, or you know women over 50 re-entering the workforce so we've got to be thinking about what are the social outcomes that the government is responsible for kind of addressing and then how can we target what we do for those areas and that last one is really about apathy that's you know I tried I spent so long once two years ago and I didn't win the grant so yeah you know like I'm not going to try again and and that's cool if grants are not for you but as you can see from the results I've produced in my business and for our clients they can be massively beneficial 
but you've got to stay in the game. It's not grants are never good for you if you really need money quickly to stay afloat. You know, it's not a, it's definitely not an overnight thing. There's red tape involved. It takes time to get your outcomes. So I want to share a couple of case studies with you. I want to introduce you to Daniel. This is actually Daniel who owns both the Gold Coast Wake Park and the Aqua Park. You might know him. He's been a client of mine for a couple of years now and has become a good friend. He's also a three-time world champion wakeboarder. So my family and I have had lots of fun visiting his theme parks, but you've probably seen this one if you're in Queensland or if you're on the Gold Coast or Brisbane. Great park. If you haven't been there, it's lots of fun. I encourage you to give it a go. But what we did for, for Daniel was we first met him a couple of years ago and we did some disaster recovery grants for him. And then we won like an event grant so he could put on a big event at the Wake Park. And then we we niched into that sort of, I was talking about that flexibility. So we niched into helping him specialise in the accessible tourism space. So we were able to get an infrastructure grant so he could replace all his equipment and upgrade upgrade all his electrics and stuff. And then we were able to start marketing for him outside Australia. So when people are looking for tourism, you know, um, opportunities, recreational opportunities, when they know they're going to be visiting, then he's able to claim back 50% of his marketing costs. Um, we've been able to get him community grants. Yeah, all types of different grants. And so in just in the last year alone, uh, so far this last financial year, we've generated $370,000 for him. And, and we continue to find amazing opportunities. And what works so well is, he will call us like once a month and he'll be like, oh, I thought about doing this. Would there be a grant for that? And we'll go have a look for him and there might not be anything now, but maybe something shows up, you know, in three months or six months. So it's about kind of staying open and being ready. And then just another case study for a, from a client of ours. We, they wanted to scale their staff. They wanted to onboard four new staff because they thought that it would make them an extra $800,000 a year. They didn't have the money for four new staff. So we worked on a strategy with them the wage cost was going to be $224,000. So we put on four staff as apprentices, two of them in Queensland and two of them in Victoria, which gave them access to some additional state-based wage, re wage reimbursement schemes. So we were able to call back 182,000 of that 224 wage cost. So four new people um, cost them $42,000 for the whole year. So just $10,500 for four people every quarter pretty amazing results and they did they did exceed that target of an extra 800,000 they actually did 1.2 in addition so you can see that there are you know there are different ways and different strategies that you can apply to use grants it's not always as straightforward as just filling out a form and waiting to see if you got lucky it's about you know planning mapping out a strategy and then working that strategy so you're probably wondering how, how we work with clients. So there are three ways that we work with clients. And I'm just going to take a moment to tell you about those now. So first thing we do is we have a whole bunch of free resources, some of which I'm giving you today. And we just tell people, tell people how to use grants. And then we have a membership offer just launched last week. And this is a low cost offer. It's a community based offer where people have access to me every single week. They get an update from me about new grants that are opening. They get to participate in a community so we can kind of help each other craft pictures in that community. And we also give them access to all of our template library. So that's all the tools and templates that we used to generate that $26 million last year available to you with the support to be able to find the right grants, submit winning proposals, and then use grants to grow quicker. And then we do have a high ticket VIP service as well, where we do that work for our clients. And, and Daniel is an example of one of those clients. So because I'm not here with you live, I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask me any questions. So I have suggested to Nick that he can collect any questions and send them through to me, but you're also more than welcome to, um, in fact, I think that's a great idea. Send me your questions, just drop them in the chat. I'll get Nick to send them across to me and I'll record um, a little video answer that and send it out to all of you um, to answer any questions that you might have. Hopefully I've shared some information that's kind of um, sparked a light bulb with you here today. And if you have, I would love to ask you to let me know what is your feedback. If you just scan on this code, it'll take you over to our Google review page. Now here's a tip. I told you I like to do everything quickly. I just spent yesterday in a workshop here at the Business Blueprint conference, learning how to use Google reviews. And um, 
realised that we didn't, we don't have any. We don't, we haven't even set up a, a business page. So we've just done that yesterday, and I would super appreciate if you've benefited at all from the information I've shared you to just drop in there and let me know what it was that you enjoyed um, about the information I shared or what you learned today. In exchange for that, I'm very happy to offer you our, our downloads. So we have two that are available to you and, and we will get these to you. Nick's going to send me a list of the people who are on the call so I can get these out to you. So we've got our definitive grants guide, which covers everything I've shared with you today, plus a bit more and gives you links for a lot of our favorite grants. So you can have a bit of a look at what types of grants are out there and how might you use them. We also have one for the community sector. So in the case that um, you're a not-for-profit or a charity or you work with those types of clients, one of the things we've been doing more of lately is helping people in business use grants to attract clients to them. Um, so it's also good to keep that in mind when you're looking at the types of grants that are out there. So again, thank you so much for having me. Apologies, I wasn't here um, with you in person, but I hope it's been beneficial information anyway. I really do love using grants as a growth strategy. And I hope that this gives you a bit of insight into how you might use them for your own business. And I look forward to seeing any questions or comments, and we will get those resources to you by tomorrow. Have a fantastic day and enjoy the rest of your evening. Excellent and a very big thank you for Kim. She actually went out of her way today to uh, record that because she couldn't be here. So uh, yeah, let's give her a virtual round of applause, even though she can't uh, hear it. Uh, she will see this video. She will know that uh, you were here as well too. Um, now she has kindly offered uh, those resources um, and she's actually given us the link as well. So that link is in the chat. So if you uh, click on those links, it'll take you through to the resources for you to go and download it. And please do leave a, a uh, Google review for her as well too, if you found that information helpful. But uh, if you have got any questions, do drop them into chat. Kim is really responsive. She, she's happy to answer those questions uh, as well too. And uh, she, she will sort of uh, come back to us with a, a video of the, uh, the um, answers to your questions questions anyone got a pressing question at all that uh, wasn't actually covered in there you can you can speak it out as well too and uh, i'll be able to let her know as well or are we all dumbfounded the amount of money that we've left late, uh, on the table there that's been available for us for all of these years that we didn't know about <laughs> imagine that three hundred eighty thousand dollars of uh, available hey yes oh sorry was was that may was it no, Vicky? Victoria, was it? Yeah, right. I, I can't find the hand thing. Oh, there it is down the bottom. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I hear, just wasn't, it was, sorry, me. It wasn't very clear to me exactly what her services are. Like, does she help you and form, like I've applied for those grants before and like she said, just got very disappointed because not being accepted into them, you give up. So what exactly does she do? Like, does she help you formulate the grant? Does she help you um, create a strategy for, you know, how to get these grants? I, I didn't quite she, get what she Yes. Yeah, so, so she's got three ways that she works with people. So the first way is she'll provide you with, uh, you know, the resources to help you, uh, you know, find the grants and to apply for the grant. So those resources that she has uh, given us uh, in those links that are in chat now, those are available and they'll give you, uh, you know, a range of sources for, for grants as well. And uh, on her website, so we've dropped that link to her website in the chat as well too. If you go there, she's got a whole lot of free resources about how to you know, go about applying for grants and some tips to you know, put together your application. The second service she's got is, is that membership service. And she will, you can jump onto a call with her. So if, uh, she's there every week. And if you've got any questions about it or want some direct help, she'll help you to uh, you know, put that your grants together or look for, for ones that are appropriate. So she'll help you do that. Or the third thing she does is if uh, you want her to do it all for you, 
she will then go and do it all for you. So, and obviously that one there is the, you know, you're paying for that that service so that you pay a bit more for that one there. But the uh, free resources, that's free. If she's that membership one where she's helping you along, that there's a, a paid membership. So it's a low cost membership. The other one is, you know, she, you'll pay her and she'll, she'll just do the lot. That sounds the best, but what does she charge for that? <laughs> I'm not sure, actually. So I think she's got a range of ways of, of charging with it, but uh, you'll you'll need to talk to her about it. In fact, why don't you just drop that into chat? What are the uh, what does she charge for it? And uh, she'll get a copy of the chat, and she'll be able to answer that for you as well, too. All right. Any other uh, questions? Anyone want some grant money? <laughs> uh, yes. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Michelle how are you? Yeah, how you going? Good, good. Um, that's good. Uh, look, I, I love that her presentation. It was great. I, I've been quite successful. I've managed to get a um, $110,000 grant for a client, and I've been able to get some arts grant, grants for myself. The, the one thing, is, what, my husband's in the film industry, and I'm just wondering whether um, he, she would handle uh, working with people in the film industry so in the arts in the art space so um i, I don't know yeah, the specifics so as to whether she does uh, she, okay. she she possibly does uh, again if you mm -hmm. just drop that uh, question into chat um she'll okay. be able to uh, come back and let you know so i'll make sure you get the uh, answers to that uh, from, okay thank you yeah but i'm sure she does there's lots of arts grants out there as well so and i imagine she's across uh, all of those as well too yeah okay thank you very much Excellent. Thanks, Michelle. Anyone else? No worries. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you work with clients and, uh, you know, you've got clients there that, uh, you know, may be eligible for grants or, um, uh, or, or you're not sure, uh, Kim will certainly help you with your clients or help you to help your clients. Uh, because as uh, Jessica Rickett said when she was on here, uh, you know, if her clients win the grants, she wins the work uh, with them. So, you know, so you've got two levels, either grants for you or grants for your clients to for you to help uh, with the implementation. All right, well, any other questions, just drop it into chat and uh, we'll get Kim to, to answer it. Uh, if um, you do want to contact Kim, her website is uh, growology.com.au. Uh, she's obviously on uh, LinkedIn as well too. So, uh, you know, you'd be able to reach out uh, to her. If you're into ocean swimming, you may even catch her out in the waves of uh, Miami. If you want to go for a swim to uh, have a chat with her out there. Uh, but probably the best place is her website or social media. Mm. All right. Well, we do have uh, the a uh, prize to give away as well, a door prize. Uh, now, she has emailed me this afternoon with it as well too. And if I just bring that uh, up. Um, she is happy to offer uh, someone here a one-to-one um, -one strategy call to help you with the grants, to help identify you know, what grants uh, might be suitable for you and um, how to go about applying for them, how to sort of craft your application. So she's uh, happy to offer that one-to-one uh, -one, uh, strategy call for someone that wins. So, of course, you've got to be in the room to win. So let's uh, bring up um, Wheel of Names. And of course, everybody's name is here in the wheel of names. So let's spin the wheel and see who our lucky winner is tonight. And look at that, eh? Azim, it pays to be here, eh? So well, well done. done, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. So I'll put you in touch with uh, Kim. I'll we'll put you in touch with uh, Kim tomorrow. And uh, yeah, you can organise um, a consultation with her. That's Probably good both ways. So perfect. Great. Great. Excellent. Uh, sorry, Victoria, you had your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I just clicked on that link you had in the chat thing to the 25 tips or whatever it was yeah 25 grant top tips it doesn't go anywhere oh does it uh, that's probably because i misspelt it i was typing on the run let me just have a look at it here yes i'm wondering which one is her is her website i can't see it okay let me just grab that uh, link the proper link i've just missed out a dot in that so thank you for that
All right, there we go. There is the proper link that works. So thanks, Victoria. All right. Right. Well, that is our session tonight. Now, uh, of course, if you want to watch that again, it will be available up on uh, YouTube uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, with your with those apps and tools that we uh, shared uh, earlier on as well, too. Uh, those that will share those there, so that uh, you know if there are any there that are helpful for you in your business, you can implement those. We do have a done for you. Uh, sorry, a, a service there where we can help you with those. So if you do want some help with it. And uh, we do have a done for you service, which we obviously charge for as well. And uh, if you do want us to uh, help you in that sort of way, then uh, feel free to reach out to us and more than happy to uh, offer you the assistance that you uh, need. If you're not a member of the Business Owners Smashing It Online Facebook group, uh, go there, uh, just pop onto Facebook, search for Business Owners Smashing It Online. In fact, the link is in chat as well too. You can click on it. Go and uh, join that group as well too. The YouTube link is in chat too. So if you if you haven't subscribed to that and you do want to watch this again or any of the other sessions, click on that, go and subscribe, hit the bell and you'll get a notification when that is uploaded. Uh, but apart from that, that's our session tonight. We get uh, 10 minutes early. So uh, there's probably time for dessert for uh, everyone by yourselves as well too. So uh, thanks for coming on tonight and look forward Thank to you, seeing you next week.